Welcome back everyone to Main Street Living. If you have noticed that you don't get those little packets of peanuts on the airplane anymore, you probably know it's because peanut allergies are on the rise. Yeah, that's right. And unfortunately, it's quite common. Around 20% of people have some kind of food allergy or sensitivity. With that, Dr. Jill Hart is here to shine some light on this. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. So just mentioned, it seems like those food allergies are on the rise as well as intolerances. Are these things we're born with? Do they develop over time? How does that work? Well, we aren't we aren't actually born with allergies or intolerances, but as soon as we you know we come into existence, we're bombarded with all sorts of things, including foods, um, and our body unfortunately um, starts can start to react either in the form of an allergy, an IgE reaction, or um, in the form of a, an intolerance or sensitivity. Yeah, it's so interesting how that happens because I remember when I was a kid. Personally, I could eat anything, but I remember having stomach issues as a teenager and I didn't figure out why until I was an adult and got some food allergy testing. And now I know that I have intolerances to gluten and also dairy. So this is something that seems like it's becoming more well common or more common rather, or maybe just more well known. But what are some of the most common foods that give people trouble? Well, when we look at allergies, um, true allergies, you know, that immediate reaction, um, you know, the foods there are, are, you know, things like your cow's milk, eggs, peanuts, nuts, shellfish, etc. But when it comes to sensitivities, and this is where York tests are, are expert, um, you're looking at a wide range of foods, any food that's got sort of proteins in. So it could be foods like your cow's milk or eggs, or it could be foods that you might not think about. Um, as being uh, reactive, you know, make your fruits and vegetables, your pulses, lentils, things like that as well. So there's quite a range of, of different foods that you can be sensitive to. So sensitivity, intolerance, allergy, is there a difference between the terminology, severity of response, or is it all kind of the same? So your allergies are your, you know, your immediate reactions to foods. You know, you could have tingling in your mouth, you could be sick. And, and that's, you know, you, you need medical intervention because it could be life threatening. Mm -hmm. It's very severe. Whereas food sensitivities or intolerances are, you know, are less, less impactful in terms of the severity, but they can be very impactful on your life. It might be with irritable bowel, digestive problems, migraines, headaches, chronic things that are ongoing for people every day. It might be things like low energy and low mood. And a lot of time people live with their symptoms thinking it's normal. It's just normal for them actually when it when it isn't and there are things that can be done to help yeah and that's the hard part too because i remember for a long time i would tell the doctors hey i've got these gi symptoms and they're going there's nothing wrong with you and finally somebody looked and tested for the foods and so can people be allergic to something and not necessarily realize it or is it something that bam you're going to see it right away well, with allergies, different to in, uh, sensitivities. Right. With allergies, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't come across that food, you might not know that you've react. You know, you've got a reaction to it. So, if you don't eat something, uh, you might suddenly eat something, uh, you know, a couple of times, and then suddenly, you know, have that reaction to it. With the ongoing food sensitivities, I think quite often people don't realise that they're reacting to mm -hmm. something. You know, they might think their migraines due to, you know, a glass of red wine or. Yeah you know, a chocolate or something like that. And actually it might not be, it might be due to yeast or cow's milk or something Oof. else, you know? And so that's where testing really does come in and help actually in terms of food sensitivity testing. So if we want to find that out, should we go to our general practitioner? Should we go to a specialist clinic for testing? Should we food log? How do you find those things out? Well, for an allergy, you know, an immediate with a severe reaction, I'd always recommend going to see your medical practitioner. Um, at York Test, um, we've been offering food sensitivity testing since 1998 now, and we actually developed one of the first food sensitivity tests. And at York Test, you can actually do this from a finger prick of blood in the, in the comfort of your own home. And, and the samples take, you know, very easy to do. The samples sent back to our accredited laboratory um, where you can actually um, then, it's then analysed by our specialist scientists and results are sent back to you in a really easy to understand format. They're graded 0 to 100, and you can see very clearly which are your high reactivity foods and which are, you know, those foods that are normal reactivity. Wow. 
And I've heard of something called the elimination diet, where you find out the foods that you're sensitive to, and then you eliminate them for a period of time, you know, whether that be weeks, months, et cetera, and slowly introduce them back into your diet. Is this something that you recommend? Or are you saying that if you find something that you're sensitive to, you've got to avoid that for the rest of your life? Because personally, I would love to eat pizza again. (laughs) So for allergies, like, you know, I'd certainly you know suggest that you avoid things for the rest of your life. But for sensitivities, um, you know, and um, you can, um, you know, yes, an elimination diet is is what we recommend based on the testing that we do at York Test. Um, and then after a period of say three months of removing the food from your diet and looking after your gut in that time, you know, maybe taking some probiotics, keeping healthy. Um, you can start to introduce those foods back into your diet really slowly, one at a time, and see what you can tolerate. With me, um, I'm really reactive to cow's milk. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been testing myself for many years, and I know now that I can actually tolerate a small amount of that. You know, tea or coffee is absolutely fine, but if I go and have ice cream or, you know, cheese or something like that, I start to suffer again. So it's an elimination diet, which, um, you know, we recommend because we you know we're giving people choices at York test with we're starting with good evidence for, for what people are reacting to and giving people choices then about what they you know we suggest they eliminate first um, and then people can find out how you know how much they can tolerate after a while but food intolerances and sensitivities aren't necessarily for life and that's the good thing all right so i'm just stunned by this one simple test can tell you all that how do people find out more about york test if they're interested and also, too, to throw this in, how is your test different than other tests out there? Because I know there's a lot. Yeah. So, uh, so I mean, the York, York test measures something called food-specific IgG. It's an antibody uh, in, in blood. We invented uh, one of the first food-specific IgG antibody tests uh, in existence in 1998. We've probably tested over half a million mm. <laughs> uh, tests over the period of time. Um, so we've got a really good efficacy and good evidence base for what we do. Okay. Um, and for people can find out more by going to our, our website, yorktest.com forward slash US. Uh, and it is available, f- um, you know, widely for, for people to use and, and use from their own home as well. Great resource. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you so much. I could talk to her all day. It's so interesting, Brandy, to talk about all of that stuff. And speaking of interesting, I'm going to climb to new heights. Stay tuned because coming up next on Main Street Living, come ski with me in South Lake Tahoe.